Hi Summit Kids, Miss Heather here. Thank you for watching Kids Church today. Our big picture question is, what is mercy? Mercy is when God does not give us the punishment we deserve. He's such a merciful God. So today in our story, we're gonna learn more about how merciful our God is. So pay real close attention today. Jesus told a story to some people who looked down on others. These people thought that they were better than everyone else. Jesus wanted to teach them a lesson. Two men went into the temple to pray, Jesus began. One man was a Pharisee, or a religious leader. Pharisees tried very hard to please God by following the rules. They even made up new rules to follow. The other man was a tax collector, Jesus said. Many people did not like tax collectors. They were often dishonest and unfair in the way that they collected money. <clears throat> Jesus said, The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not greedy, dishonest, and unfaithful like other people. I am glad that I am not like the tax collector. I fast two days a week and tithe. The tax collector stood far away. He did not even lift up his head because he was so sorry for the things that he had done. The tax collector pounded on his chest and said, Have mercy on me, God. I am a sinner. The prayer of the Pharisee was very different from the prayer of the tax collector. Jesus explained that God was happy with the tax collector and that he forgave him. But God was not happy with the Pharisee. Jesus said, If you put yourself above others, you will be put down. But if you are humble, God will honor you. The tax collector knew he needed God to forgive him, and he cried out to God. Everyone is a sinner who needs God's mercy and forgiveness. Jesus took the punishment for our sin by dying on the cross. We can cry out to God like the tax collector, and because of Jesus, God will have mercy on us. Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for Questions from Kids. Alexa from Auburn, Alabama asks, Is there a right way to pray and a wrong way to pray? Alexa, that's a great question. You know, yes, th there is a right way to pray. And the scripture has a lot to say about prayer. The, the scripture gives us all types of answers to questions that we have. The scripture tells us in the book of Jude and in 1 Thessalonians that we ought to pray in the spirit and in short what that means is we should not pray selfishly we should be praying the will of god so a great way to pray is to read through the psalms and you can pray through the book of psalms david was a fabulous writer and he gave us many ways that we could ascribe to and things we could pray for i also think it's good that we pray continually not just haphazardly or only when we need things from God. We should have a heart of continual prayer. Now, I am not saying that when we are in need, we can't run to God and ask God for help and assistance. He will surely do that. But he tells us to have a continual heart of prayer, continually thinking about and calling out to him. You know, young listeners, prayer to God shows us our complete dependence on him. It is also good for us to pray for other people and not just to pray selfishly. We should pray for people in our communities and people in our schools and other nations and Christians all around the world. Those are just a few of the ways that we can and a few of the places and ideas that we can pray for and about. We can also pray for God's will to be done. We ask God, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is a good and right way to pray. Now you ask, is there a wrong way to pray? And Jesus Christ gives us an example in Luke chapter 18. In Luke chapter 18, we can see a Pharisee and a tax collector. And the Pharisee is standing before God saying how good he is, how right he is, how much he has given. And then we see the tax collector standing before a holy and a righteous God, broken and with a broken and contrite heart. And the tax collector is saying, I don't deserve any good thing from God. 
And so there is a right and a wrong way to pray. Now we've learned a lot about prayer, a lot the scripture has to say about prayer. What have you learned about prayer today? The word revolution means a radical change in society. Boston, Massachusetts is known as the birthplace of revolution because many historic events took place there during the Revolutionary War in the late 1700s. The city has slowly been changing churches into townhomes and Christian universities into schools, not based on the Bible or Jesus' teaching. Even though the city itself was founded by people pursuing religious freedom, most people in Boston today have not heard the gospel. But God has a plan for this city. He is creating radical change through local pastors, Christian workers, and missionaries who are telling the people of Boston all about Jesus Christ. They are loving people, starting churches, and baptizing new believers. It can be difficult meeting the needs and sharing the gospel with almost six million people. That's why missionaries need our help. We can give through our church's missions offering to support the current work and send more missionaries to Boston. We can also pray for God to continue His revolution of changing hearts and minds to love Jesus in Boston. Well, thank you for watching Kids Church today. Have an awesome week. Bye.